90% of the world's blind and visually impaired live in low-income countries where cataracts are the leading cause of needless blindness. The Tej Kohli and Ruit Foundation has an aspiration to screen at least 1 million people in the world's poorest communities by 2026 and to reverse at least half a million of blindness. A large proportion of cataract blindness can be cured in a procedure that lasts just 7 minutes and costs only $50. The procedure transforms lives, especially the lives of women who are disproportionately affected by cataracts due to socio-economic vulnerabilities and inequalities. Women like Srimani, who live 7 hours away from the nearest community eye center. The journey from her home in the remote Himalayan outback to the community eye center is difficult and at many times dangerous. And women like Murati Parsi of Karmahawa, Lumbini. Despite living only one hour away from an eye hospital, she could not access surgery due to her family's limited circumstances. Srimani and Murathi had both accepted blindness as their fate and continued to live in their world of darkness. One may think that these are singular stories, stories of two people unable to afford or access surgery. But that's not the case. There are too many Srimanis and Murathi Parsis in this world. Sadly, most of them live in the developing world. In the past decade, tragedy struck Srimani's life threefold. She first lost her son, then her husband, and then her eyesight. I have not been able to see anything from 2017 onward. What has happened to my eyesight? I don't think my eyes will be restored even if I come to Fapru. Will it? What should I do? I can't even come around to killing myself. Hundreds of kilometers away, in the plains of Lumbini, Murati Parsi spends her days in darkness. Along with blindness comes a set of difficulties. It has been a while since I lost my eyesight. I was working in the field when I felt a piercing experience in my eyes. I fell down in the field and ever since my vision became blurry. Since the past one to one and a half year, I haven't been able to see anything. I don't have the money to avail treatment. We are very poor. I went to my daughter's home, stayed there for a month or two. She tried to get my eyes treated, but could not do so too. After that, I returned home. Srimani Murathi and countless others don't have the resources to get their sight fixed. Lucky for them, there is a doctor not far away who has dedicated his life to cure the blind, especially those suffering from cataract blindness.
I am Dr. Sandra Gruit, an ophthalmologist uh, based in Nepal. And uh, over the past uh, more than three decades, I've been engaged uh, very passionately in uh, preventing blindness, especially cataract blindness. There are nearly uh, 20 million people in the world with cataracts like this, which blocks the patient's vision totally. And uh, this patient will probably be seeing just perception of light only. And we've been doing this surgery, which is for small lenses and cataract surgery for about two decades now, an extremely good result. Uh, you know, I was uh, uh, I was born in a in a place uh, on the extreme northeast of Nepal, in a place called Olangchengola, at the foothills of the third highest mountain of Nepal, Kanchenjunga and uh, much remoter than this place. Uh, you know, small village of about 100 houses and uh, uh, almost uh, sequestrated from the, uh, you know, from the whole uh, country. For Dr. Ruit, blindness is not limited to visual impairment or an inability to see. It is the socio-economic impact of blindness, especially in developing countries, which inspires him to work relentlessly towards eradicating preventable blindness. When you have cataract, which is like graying of the hair, uh, people uh, uh, have problems uh, in their livelihood. Uh, people, the rhythm of the society is uh, imbalanced and uh, they become economically affected and uh, mentally affected. And it is said that the lifespan gets shortened because of blindness due to cataract. And uh, different studies, such as a study which is quoted in Lancet, uh, says that surgery of cataract can result to uh, an uh, investment return of as much as 1500% in one year. You can see the white pearly nucleus there, which is very hard. intraocular lens here. It's a non-foldable single-piece rigid intraocular lens manufactured in Nepal, in Tirbanga. These lenses are available for the cost of about little less than $4. Dr. Ruit also explains that Nepal's picturesque hills and revered trekking trails are in fact a further disadvantage for the visually impaired. beautiful part of the morning and uh, Jim you know if you look at the terrain which I know very well 
you can imagine how difficult it is for people like us to cruise through this terrain and imagine uh, how difficult it's going to be for people who are visually impaired and uh, sometimes impossible. They cannot move. If they move, they will fall. And uh, uh, I, I believe uh, that uh, sight doesn't say second class or first class. It has to be first class. There has to be no compromise on quality. And uh, these people, especially these people living in the outback, they really deserve the best uh, sight in the world. studies that they do very well postoperatively, they do very well on long term fall off. So this is what the small disease and cataract surgery is. Dr. Ruet and his team have dedicated their lives to restoring sight in some of the most remote and underdeveloped regions of not only Nepal but several other developing regions in the world including China, North Korea, India, Myanmar, Indonesia and Ethiopia. Within the time we took to introduce Dr. Ruit, he would have completed a surgery. Be it in a modern facility within a hospital or a mobile surgical camp in a prayer room in Lumbini. Dr. Ruit wants to do more in patient numbers and number of countries. Hello from England. Uh, I've known Dr. Ruet for um, some time now and uh, I admire him greatly. I reached out to him in 2020 to see if we can help eradicate what I consider preventative uh, blindness. And mainly it is in cataracts area. Dr. Ruet is amongst the very few who has been working on it and we know of him. Now we know him, and that's how Tej Kohli Ruet Foundation came about. We formed this foundation. I'm very proud to tell you that we have already, in the last couple of months, done two to 3,000 operations, successful ones. Uh, and it's very gratifying to see young people and not so young people uh, who are not able to see. Some of them were born blind, can see due to this, this uh, surgeries that we are, we are doing. Our model is to train doctors all over the poor countries so that they can take our formula and what we are doing and extrapolate it to other areas and, and do what I think can be done and, and get this horrible disease at least down to a, where the surgeries are only confined to more serious forms of blindness. Of the few million that we are thinking of screening, we think that at least 300 to 500,000 will be cured of blindness. Now that is our, our target. We think it's a realistic target and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure it happens. My, st my staff and I will give every help, logistical, financial, and whatever help is required to make sure that we cure at least that many patients. I don't believe in uh, direct charity. I believe in grassroots charities. My, um, all my charities so far have been grassroots charity. At some stage in a year or two, we should be able to uh, make sure that nobody remains blind in Nepal because of cataract and because they are not able to pay for it. And, that's, uh, and then we, go, we, we would like to go to India, we would like to go to other parts of Asia and other parts of Africa and maybe South America. And we are looking at, in, uh, in a period of five years, uh, you know, uh, probably training doctors. And then, uh, you know, my you know, ambitious aim is to see whether we can reach that half a million 
you know, uh, magic number uh, of surgeries. In early 2021, the Tej Kohli and Rith Foundation was inaugurated with two microsurgical camps. One in Lumbini, the birthplace of Lord Buddha, and the second one in Solokumbu, the foothills of Mount Everest. At the Lumbini camp, eye health personnel screened more than 900 people at the Royal Thai Monastery. They identified 312 patients who needed cataract surgery. Amongst them was Murathi Parsi. Her husband had cycled for 20 kilometers from their home with her on the back of their bicycle to bring her to the camp. In the evening, he rode her back again, happy that his wife was going to have her eyes operated upon in a few days. At her lowest point, all Murathi Parsi could see were hazy figures around her. She was dependent upon her husband, her daughter-in-law and her grandchildren. Some days, her grandchildren would get late for school because taking care of Parsi is an addition to other household chores they have to do. My daughter-in-law, grandchildren, prepare my meals and give it to me. Some days when I am eating, local dogs come and take food from my plate. I have too many troubles. Our family cannot afford my operation, so all I do is sit around the house. I can't go anywhere too. Her husband, a daily wage earner, tells us that at times he has had to forfeit a paid job to look after his blind wife. The following day, a technical team working with the Tej Kohli and Ruit Foundation arrives in Lumbini and converts a small prayer room into an operating theatre. In the next four days, Dr. Sanduk Ruit and Dr. Sagar, assisted by a battery of healthcare personnel and volunteers, conduct 312 surgeries. At the camp, Murathi, again assisted by her husband, arrives wearing a new sari to mark the occasion of having her blindness cured. Her sari has been picked out by her granddaughters. A month later, the same microsurgical camp is seen setting ground in Solokumbu. However, the screening process for this camp wasn't easy. A medical team had to reach remote corners of the district to identify patients with cataracts. Similarly, one day ahead of the surgeries, a phone call came through of a possible cataract patient in a nearby hill. Her name was Dolma Tamang and her family did not have the resources to bring her to the camp. A medical team from the Tej Kohli and Ruit Foundation along with two spaces in their vehicle, made their way towards the patient's home. The vehicle had to ford its way through a raging Solu river and drive through a newly built, unreliable off-road track. After a certain point, the team had to hike its way up to the home of Dolma Tamang. Once at her home, Dr. Sagar duly checks her eyes and tells the family that she needs to be taken to the Tej Kohli and Ruit Foundation camp for surgery. Her son carries her on his back to the jeep, from where Dolma and her daughters are taken to the camp. In Solukumbu, Dr. Ruit and his team perform 172 cataract surgeries in three days. But not without the difficulties though.
Almost every day, the sudden downpour would bring power interruptions. Outside, team members would rush to get the generator running. Inside, a sense of calmness prevailed. Everyone would continue on with their task uninterrupted. Outside, the chaos continued. On the last day of the surgeries, a new patient arrives at the surgical camp, a 14-year-old girl who has been suffering from congenital cataracts. Bipana was extremely worried that her worsening cataracts would affect her ongoing education. For children like Bipana, who live in the remote hills of Nepal, blindness implies an end of their educational journey as they do not have special provisions for the visually impaired. Dr. Rohit calmly operates upon a very nervous Bipana. The next day, the moment before taking the bandages off, or patches off moment as referred to by the medical team is a precious and an awe-inspiring moment. Patients sit quietly, a million things racing in their head, the most important one being if they will be able to see again. Once the patches are removed, patients usually take a moment. The first thing that they see when they open their eyes is the doctor who operated upon them the previous day. Dr. Ruit will conduct a small eye test, usually ask them to identify the number of fingers he's holding out, and then ask the patient to recognize their family member in the crowd. In Lumbini, the patches off moment was held right near the Maya Devi temple, the exact spot where Lord Buddha was born. Murati Parsi and her husband offer a small prayer of gratitude. In Solukumbu, 
Shimani Rai is overjoyed to have received a second chance to sight. <laughs> The environment after the patches off moment is always a joyous occasion. People are curious, they look instantly younger and will share with you their dreams of the things that they have been longing to do if they would have had a second chance to sight. This is probably one of the uh, purest and uh, uh, a place which is very close to my heart. The birthplace of Lord Buddha uh, and uh, who uh, uh, gave enlightenment uh, to, uh, of knowledge to the whole world, you know, uh, starting from Buddha Gaya in, in, in India. And uh, so for us, uh, it, it is such a um, uh, privilege uh, for us to work here and give sight to people. And uh, uh, also at the same time, we have an opportunity to a uh, wonderful opportunity, I would say, uh, to launch uh, the Tej Kohli and Ruit Foundation. Vipana is excited to go back home and tell her best friend that she can see, to go to school and study without a visual impairment. She describes the beautiful things she is able to see. I saw the doctor, people, the mountain peaks and the forest in the far away hills. And her family is relieved that blindness is not going to affect her future. Srimani and Suryamani who were neighbors in their village, are surprised to see each other. Earlier, they were unable to visit each other owing to their blindness, but now will be able to visit each other's homes freely and as per their desire. Srimani also looks forward to visiting the local market on Saturdays. She is excited to take in the entire site and route home. If I recognize someone, I'll call out the person too, she tells us. Murati Parsi, instead of being assisted by her grandchildren, now looks forward to helping them get ready for school. And Dolma Tamang walks independently again. marking a triumphant moment for everyone involved in helping all of them see again. The, the good thing, the best thing about cataract surgery is that it is, it gives you such positive vibe in life. And uh, I'm, I'm really fortunate, I don't, I, you know, to be uh, part of this cataract surgery uh, revolution in the world. I'm extremely happy about the progress we have made in the short two, three months. And if this is any indication and given our commitment to this cause, I expect that f at least you know, 500,000 people will be cured over a period of time.